I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Ultimate Ears, for the best earbud technology. Use the earbuds the pros use. Use Ultimate Ears. UltimateEars.com. This is Dusty Wright with the Culture Catch. Today is Rich Jacobs Day, Under Fire. Rich is a artist, newly transplanted from LA. He's got a terrific show up at the Fuse Gallery. Rich, welcome. Why art? <laughs> um. Why, why do anything really? You gotta do something. I, I make art pretty much because I have to. So that's, that's the short answer, I would say. Um, were, you I, always, were you always drawn to this medium as opposed yeah. to music? I've done both actually. I like playing music as well as painting, but uh, painting's kind of taking over right now. So. And when you started, uh, were you doing the subversive elements of art, graffiti art, bombing yeah. sides of buildings, cars, vans? I got pretty much into a first through punk rock, mostly doing record covers for friends, bands, t-shirts, that kind of, you know, just any way I could get in the first, you know, when you're a little kid, that's how you get exposed to it, doing flyers for shows, that kind of thing. And then, yeah, I started doing other stuff, riding on the street, uh, doing skateboard graphics, just things like that, and then started to get interested in doing illustration and gallery shows. and. Well, just finding whatever way to have fun and, and projects that seemed interesting. So, were you inspired by any of the guys like Coop and you know uh, 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 Ed Roth, Big Daddy Roth, any of those guys? Not so much. I definitely knew of their work, and uh, you know I, I think growing up in California, you see all that stuff for sure. So being from Long Beach, you had SST Records. Yeah. So obviously, you've got the Black Flag T-shirt. That was one of their early hits, hit sure. records. That was obviously an influence, and yeah. the whole. LA punk rock thing was massive. Yeah, I mean, definitely had a huge influence when I was younger. Definitely Xerox art, little punk fanzines, and uh, you know, hand hand distributed Xerox magazines that people were making. That kind of stuff was influencing me simultaneous to the the music that was happening. So, I don't think we've ever had a period. Maybe I'm wrong. Where we've had this collision of music with graphic arts and and really borrowing elements from each other, and these artists have really embraced alternative music, punk rock music, and have gone out of their way to establish bands through the artwork. The, the poster art has been, I mean, since that movement has yeah. exploded. It's true. I, I mean, I definitely know a lot of artists that get their start that way because it's something everyone's interested in. You know, when you're, when you're drawing, you kind of need an excuse to, to do something. And that's, that was what my excuse was, you know, drawing like skateboard stuff, punk stuff, flyers. and that. 
That makes sense. I mean, I think they're both self-expression. They're both in the same family, so it makes sense that they would collide eventually. The energy was pretty similar, especially in the early days. So. And what, what was it about uh, the skateboarders that they co-opted punk music? Was it the lifestyle? Was it their, their friends were the musicians as well? They were skateboarding musicians? I, I think it's the rawness, really, you know, just the, the attitude and the, the overall vibe. There's something about skateboarders that, that tend to be kind of do-it-yourself and go-getters. They go out there and make ramps and street skate, whatever they need to do and adapt. I think punk is kind of similar. People just find, you know, basements to play in. They don't, even if there's not a place for them to play, they find a way. So that's kind of how skateboarders are, too, in my opinion. That's, that's how it was growing up. We'd build ramps in our backyard when there's no more skate parks left and put shows on in kids' basements and make the flyers at Kinko's and, you know, just do it all yourself because no one else was going to create it if you didn't. So I've kind of tried to apply that whole do-it-yourself approach to my artwork because that's what feels most comfortable to me. I don't really wait around for other other people to facilitate it. I just kind of try to make things happen that I, that I want to see happen. So I feel like it, it's mostly a confidence sort of attitude that I think both of those things share. So You mentioned something that drew me to your work is uh, this do-it-yourself attitude. Also the ability to use found objects in the work. I love the figures that you've, you've drawn over the Chinese menus or you said you used a, uh, a cereal box and, and etched out this elaborate piece of artwork on the back side of the cereal box. Is, is that something you did consciously, or was it just like, well, you know, let's recycle this? It's a little bit of both. You know, I think early on it was just basically out of necessity. I couldn't afford a canvas, or I couldn't really pay for art supplies, so I just used what was laying around, and then it kind of just became more comfortable. I'd rather paint on some, you know, cheap piece of plastic or wood on the street than go buy a $200 canvas that I might be able to sell or might not, you know? I. I think it was kind of out of necessity at first, and then it just became like an aesthetic choice, you know? I just feel like I can relate to it more. There's a little more character in a scraped up piece of wood that might have gotten dragged down the street than something you might buy at the store for a lot of money. So, right. so I, there's a little more life in it. So you're still you're still finding used pieces of ob or you, objects on the street that you would use in your work? I try to, man. I try to just keep an eye out everywhere I walk and look for things that, that seem interesting or I feel like I could create some dialogue with if there's something in it that catches my eye. Yeah, I still definitely use that stuff.